technologically modified superheroes in colorful themed supersuits battling against invasions of giant monsters and robots from distant galaxies. Spaceships, razor blade boomerangs, kung fu, gunfights, race cars, motorcycles. No, I'm not talking about Star Wars. I mean, if you like Star Wars, you're going to love this because it's basically, practically, almost exactly like a kind of Star Wars. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Battle of the Planets. Battle of the Planets is an 85 episode animated series that ran from 1978 through 1980. It features a superhero team called G-Force, comprised of five incredible young people, all orphans, tasked with protecting this galaxy from alien attacks initiated by other galaxies, specifically from a force called Spectra from the planet Spectra, led by Zoltar and their boss, the Luminous One. Always five acting as one, Mark, Jason, Princess, Tiny, and Kiop, each possessing superpowers and abilities through their physical enhancements and the technology they utilize, not the least of which is their wrist-mounted transmuting devices and their bird-themed uniforms. Operating from their underwater base called Center Neptune, they are guided by a robot named Seven Zark Seven who constantly monitors the known universe for possible threats that may require the unique skill set of G-Force. They travel across the galaxies in a fantastic spaceship called the Phoenix that also acts as a transport for their individual vehicles and, as an absolute last resort, has the power to turn into a giant flaming bird to extract the team from just about any predicament that they find themselves in. Battle of the Planets was created by Sandy Frank, a veteran of television production since the 1960s. Sandy Frank, Sandy Frank, he's the source of all our pain. It was produced by Sandy Frank Enterprises, but it was produced by Tatsunoko Production. Created by, produced by, produced by, what's the difference? In 1972, Tatsunoko Productions created Gotcha Man, an animated series about five technologically modified young people with incredible powers protecting the planet and its natural resources against attacks from outer space. 105 episodes were broadcast in Japan from 1972 through 1974. It was a successful and beloved series and has remained an important brand in Japan, inspiring reboots and even a live action movie in 2013. In 1977, three years after Gotcha Man concluded its Japanese run, it was showcased by by Tatsunoko at the Marche International des Programmes de Television, or MIPTV. MIPTV is kind of like the Cannes Film Festival, but for television products. Everyone who has a show that they want to market internationally shops it around to see if there's interest in the license. Sandy Frank attended MIP in April of 1977 and took an immediate interest in Gotcha Man, so much so that he acquired prints of some original episodes to watch at his leisure back home in the States. He kicked around some ideas, but wasn't fully inspired to take action until that summer, when Star Wars premiered and absolutely redefined everything in every industry that touched film or television production. Every television station, every movie studio, every creator was trying to find the next Star Wars or something that could be sold in a manner related to Star Wars. If your elevator pitch didn't include the phrase, it's like Star Wars, but then you weren't going to get very far with anyone willing to invest their cash in your idea. Licensing Japanese cartoons for adaptation in the United States wasn't anything new. Gigantor, Astro Boy, and Speed Racer previously made the trip over in the 1960s. Change beyond the names of the characters was and always will be a factor due to both the localization of the stories and the differences in broadcast standards from Japan to the United States. There are always going to be cultural or historical references in the Japanese versions that the U.S. audience won't understand that will have to be explained in a different way or removed altogether. What is considered appropriate for young viewers in Japan may be considered too violent, too graphic, too mature for U.S. viewers. Sandy Frank licensed the full international rights to Gotcha Man with few exceptions. Broadcast, merchandising, music, publishing, anywhere he could potentially market the show to profit, he had the rights to do so as long as Tatsunoko got their cut. And he wanted to go a step beyond localization for the U.S. market. Sandy wanted to reach that Star Wars audience, and to get there, Gotcha Man was going to have to transmute into something like Star Wars, but... After the necessary edits were made to satisfy broadcast standards, removing excessive violence, on-screen deaths, and profanity, however tame by today's standards, the production found themselves with a peculiar dilemma. The total runtime for the episodes was shorter than was necessary to be broadcast. They were going to need to create some filler, and also, there weren't many planets involved in this battle of planets. 
to give the show more of an intergalactic feel, to push it into an even more Western science fiction product, to appeal to the 8 to 11 year olds newly enamored with droids and spaceships, and to fill time, a new character and episode framing device unique to Battle of the Planets had to be developed. Newly animated scenes featuring Seven Zark Seven, his dog One Rover One, and an overly sexualized, disembodied female voice called Susan would move the stories along when the original footage from Gotcha Man could not be used for reasons. Set a Neptune control, Seven Zark Seven. Hello, Zark. This is Susan, at early warning, out on planet Pluto. These new animation sequences also provided G-Force with a futuristic underwater base where Seven's Arc 7 would operate from and the team could reside when they were not on a mission. Additional time was filled with footage of various outer space environments, space travel, and the means to sell the idea that G-Force was actually leaving one planet and heading to another. Can't have a Star War without stars. ニューグッドフェニックスのメダルレッドクレイ G Sandy Frank leaned heavily on industry connections. Several voice actors who were working for Hanna-Barbera and on radio and television joined the Battle of the Planets production. Casey Kasem, Alan Young, Janet Waldo, Ronnie Schell, Alan Oppenheimer, and featuring Bill Woodson as the narrator. Mark, look! There's Zoltar! Get him! I'll get to his spaceship. The rest of you look after Greg. The theme song was composed by Hoyt Curtin, whose work you may recognize from the Johnny Quest theme song, the Super Friends theme song, the Flintstones, the Jetsons, and lots of other cartoon themes and episode music. While Sandy Frank Enterprises owned all the rights to Battle of the Planets, their focus was on the production of the animated series and selling it to television affiliates across the United States. Unlike most superhero-themed brands from the 80s and 90s and today, where a toy line is an essential component, if not the essential component of the production, Battle of the Planets merchandise from the 70s and 80s is scarce, beautiful, and, I hate to say it, boring. There are a few books, a board game, puzzles, gas station toy guns, but no action figures, no play sets, no Ben Cooper costumes, no all-encompassing multimedia strategy that would become the norm in the 80s. That lack of exposure, the door-to-door -door sales approach to TV affiliates, the lack of presence in major TV markets across the country certainly prevented Battle of the Planets from rising to the ranks of brands like G.I. Joe, Transformers, or Masters of the Universe in the United States just a few years later. Episodes of Gotcha Man were re-edited, reformatted, redubbed to form the 85 Battle of the Planets episodes. Sandy Frank had intended to use all 105 Gotcha Man episodes and may have even been making plans for episodes beyond the initial 105. Ultimately, the Tatsunoko team wasn't able to provide the final 20 episodes in time and 85 was enough to go into syndication. When they ran out of material, Sandy Frank found an appropriate ending point and, choosing not to invest any more money into development of its continuation, wrapped production of the series. Despite the lack of a toy line, Battle of the Planets had some limited reach outside the cartoon. Vintage Battle of the Planets comics were published by Gold Key Comics. Years later, just in time for the 25th anniversary of its debut, Top Cow Comics published a series of Battle of the Planets comics, which would not only use elements from both Gotcha Man and Battle of the Planets, but would also cross over with the Witchblade and Thundercats franchises. In 2001 and 2002, Rhino Entertainment released 12 of the original 85 episodes of Battle of the Planets on VHS and DVD. DVD versions also had the corresponding episode of Gotcha Man. At the same time, Rhino released an Ultimate DVD box set with the same 12 episodes of Battle of the Planets and Gotcha Man, as well as interviews with some of the cast, crew, and an alternate version of the packaging that included an unhelmeted Jason action figure. Because in 2002, Diamond Select Toys finally delivered a full line of moderately posable action figures for the entire G-Force team, including many replicas of their individual vehicles and unhelmeted variants. Diamond also helped solicit 12-inch versions of Mark and Jason figures made by Metacom Toys in Battle of the Planets branded packaging, and Takara offered a Psygirls Princess figure that would see very limited distribution. Even on their 25th anniversary, the brand still struggled to make any significant, lasting cultural impact in the West. 
In 2003, Sandy Frank began exploring a revival of Battle of the Planets. The working title was Battle of the Planets, The New Adventures of G-Force, and the plan was to redub some of the original episodes with new voice actors, re-edit them again, leave in more of the original material, and then also give those elusive final 20 episodes of Gotcha Man the Battle of the Planets treatment. The intent was to gain some momentum and hopefully deliver a series of Battle of the Planets compilation films re-edited and redubbed in the same manner before the international license expired. But after one episode, it was considered too expensive and far too risky a venture without wider support. So the project was shelved before even being given a chance. In 2007, the Sandy Frank-owned international rights to Gotcha Man expired. Battle of the Planets and all the rights thereto officially reverted back to Tatsunoko Productions. In 2013, Sentai Filmworks licensed the rights to Gotcha Man and thereby Battle of the Planets and released the entire Gotcha Man series, all 105 episodes, on 22 DVDs. It was now possible for Battle of the Planets fans to see the original series, the original source material, in its original unedited form. In 2014, the Nelvana, d rights and Tatsunoko team that brought Beyblade Metal Fusion to the world at large announced Battle of the Planets Phoenix Ninjas, a complete reboot of the Battle of the Planets franchise due out in the fall of 2017. The fall of 2018, currently slated for the fall of 2019. An episode list can be found at the Gotcha Man fandom Wikipedia site. Battle of the Planets lasted a full 85 episodes in its original broadcast, then remained on the air in syndication into 1985. A success even if its cultural impact today is less than those of its contemporaries. Soon after its initial run, Sandy Frank teamed up with Ted Turner and Turner Broadcasting to redub and re-edit the entire Gatcha Man series again with new voices, mythology, and all the inappropriate bits put back in. It was called G-Force Guardians of Space, and even though it was more faithful to Gotcha Man than Battle of the Planets had ever been, it found a way to alienate itself from both the Gotcha Man purists and the Battle of the Planets fanbase. But the story of G-Force Guardians of Space will have to wait until we cover it next week. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. Take a quick look through our merch down below this video, but before the comments, if you're in a position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy and let us know in the comments down below the merch which version of Battle of the Planets uh, Gotcha Man you were first exposed to and whether, like Robotech, you can just live your life happily, contentedly accepting that there are two different versions and they're both good and fine and why bother being upset about any of it? Cut!